there was a request for a video on timing. And so I wanted to use this chassis as I put it together to demonstrate what timing is all about. So, uh, since I am not an expert on timing, uh, if you have or anybody has anything to add to this, please contact me. I would appreciate it. Um, so this is a 365-372 chassis, and I'm about to uh, put a cylinder head down here, but what I wanted to do was demonstrate exactly what timing was, how to use the degree wheel, uh, intake, exhaust, transfers, that type of stuff, and I'll see if I can do it in pretty good detail here. So let's just have a look to start at what happens to the piston itself. I mean, what, you know, as you turn the flywheel, the piston goes up and down, right? So at some point, you have what's called bottom dead center. And if you rotate this 180 degrees, you have top dead center. Now these are two very important landmarks, or at least top dead center is very important. Uh, because that's how everything relates to timing. Everything is in relation to top dead center. So if you imagine that this flywheel is uh, made up of 360 degrees, then you could also imagine that as you rotate it from 0 to 180, that it goes from top to bottom, and then back to top again. So this is back to zero, or around to 360. So this is a degree wheel, and this is a very, very crude degree wheel, but it does actually work. So you get the idea is zero, or 360, is top dead center, and then bottom dead center. But you have to actually accurately orient this to top dead center and bottom dead center. So let's do it crudely so we can get an understanding of exactly what happens to the piston. And just so everybody knows, these are just air fittings <laughs> with a quarter inch piece of um, brown board. I don't know what that is. And then this is just simply printed out and glued onto the degree wheel. So yeah, these are just air fittings that I happen to tap for um, the actual size to the flywheel, and believe it or not, the, the flywheel nuts for both the Husqvarna's and the steels do actually match up, at least so far. Uh, un unless you get into the really big ones, uh, the 395 and 394's have different ones, but that, uh, for the most part, we're not worried about that. Okay, so here's the degree wheel. So if I just simply screw this down, and I tighten it, so now it's tightened down, but I've got this such that the piston's more or less at top dead center, and this is not even close. So I need some way to actually orient this. So I've got this set up so that I can simply rotate the wheel and then tighten this down wherever I need it. So we're about 90 degrees off, so I'm going to spin this about 90. And now we're a full 180 degrees off. So now roughly, it's real rough, tighten this down, roughly top dead center, TDC, is where the piston's up at the top and then as it goes down, you can see bottom dead center, and then top dead center, and then bottom dead center as we go. Okay, so <clears throat> let me work on putting the cylinder on. And when the cylinder's on, it'll be uh, easier to, to see the relationship between the exhaust timing, the intake timing, and the transfer ports, and what all that means. So the first thing to do here is to get top dead center. Now, this is kind of close. In fact, it looks really close. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is balanced. So, what I mean by that is uh, you need a piston stop. Now, you can use one of the commercial ones or you can use something simple like a piece of aluminum. 
In this case, this is just a piece of aluminum. And it's in at an arbitrary point. As long as it's the same left to right, it, 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 as long as it doesn't move, it'll be the same left to right. And then what you need is a point of reference here. Now, uh, what some guys do is they have a piece of wire that comes over, um, bailing wire or whatever, uh, anything you have that's cheap is fine. Uh, what I usually do is make a couple of marks. And that way I can line them up just by eye because I'm not doing anything that's super exact anyway. Okay, so if I bring the wheel around at this point and I line up my marks, where am I at? 20, about 25 degrees there. So now what you do is you go around in the rotation and that is 52. So we loosen this and again if you have a, a better sorted wheel um, then your setup will be better. So you move this, let's go to like 35. So move that to about 35 or so. Let's go back around the other side. Again the piston stop is in there and it stops at about 40 and then again back around 35, 36 ish. Alright, so I have to take and move this back the other direction. Let's go to about 38. about one degree off. All right now we have 37 there. Go to the other side and we have 38-ish. So we're now half a degree off. Plus or minus half a degree. For what we're doing that's going to be close enough. So we have it balanced one side to another. Now if you look, you can see that as you bring this up to top dead center, as you move it plus or minus five degrees, the, the piston's not gonna move that much. So generally, we got it pretty close. Okay, so now the piston's at top dead center. A lot of guys do this different. Um, I'm gonna get the exhaust timing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shine a light in here and I'm going to look and see when I see light. So if you look in the exhaust right now, you can't see any light. As you move the wheel around, there'll be a point at which it opens and you see light. You can see light in there. No light. Light. Okay, so just as it cracks open and you see light, that's the, technically the exhaust timing. So I'm going to have a hard time capturing that on film, but what I'm going to do is just simply look myself to see if I can come up with a number. You take the wheel, you go from top dead center to 90, 95, 100. This is about 102. And you could also look at the shape of the port and whatnot uh, as well and get an idea of how well you did with your porting. Let's look for the intake timing. So intake timing, this is, we're going to actually look through. There. And you're going to roll it around. The intake timing is somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees. So you can just bring this back there somewhere. Now, can you see that that cracked open a little bit? 
that cracked open. So just where it cracks open, and what you're looking for is this is the bottom of the piston skirt. So where that cracks open is the intake timing. And again, I'm going to get this. So my intake timing right now is 82. A little too much intake. I didn't do that. Anyway, a uh, little too much intake. 80 degrees on this is good, and 82 is probably a little too much. Um, transfers. You have to look inside the spark plug hole, which is not easy, and you can see the transfers open. It is somewhere around the 120 or 130 mark. So you can look for that. Good there. So you count to 90. So you count 90, 100 from top to the center. 90 degrees, 100, 110, 120. So this is 122. So you write the numbers down, especially if it's on a cylinder. So this is 122, 102, and 82. Not too bad of numbers. They should do fine. So what does all that mean? What, what do all these numbers mean? So I'm not 100% up on two-cycle theory, so you're going to have to forgive me on that. But what this all means is pretty simple. This engine is a valve. Um, the valve opens and closes at certain times. When you have combustion happen, when the piston is a particular, at a particular spot, so many degrees before or after top dead center, combustion happens, it forces the piston down, and as the, the piston is coming down, it's grabbing the air and fuel mixture from the intake. And it's forcing the air and fuel mixture that it's grabbing down into actually what is technically the primary combustion chamber. The primary combustion chamber is actually below the piston. So uh, by, down by the bearings. That's technically the primary combustion chamber. So as it's grabbing the fuel and air, it's, it goes down, compresses the fuel and air, and squishes them into these transfer ports, which then transfers that air and fuel to a spot that becomes above the piston. The piston goes back up and compresses it, and it goes bang again. And then as the piston is coming down, the exhaust gases come out again at a certain time. So. Very simple, it's a valve that opens and closes, obviously very quickly, and the more even all of it is, the more optimal the timing is of all those openings is, the more torque and the more power you're going to produce. So with regard to exhaust timing, general rule, as I've gathered it, is the higher the exhaust, so say an exhaust, uh, an opening of 95 or so, um, the less torque, but possibly higher RPM. If you have a lot of compression up there, then you don't necessarily need to worry about that, but general rule somewhere between 100 and 105 is more optimal for exhaust timings. Uh, for transfers, 122 is, is this saw, between 122 to 102 is what's called blowdown. So that's the time between where the exhaust opens and where the transfer ports open. Again, a shorter blowdown, I think, increases the RPM. If you have a longer blowdown, then it'll give more time to actually build up the pressure in that primary combustion chamber. Again, if anybody's got better information than me, please, uh, I'd love to hear it. The, uh, with regard to the intake, the intake can only grab so much air and fuel based on the size of the primary combustion chamber. Uh, and the more intake you give it, the less pressure is going to be developed, but the more air and fuel you might grab. 
So it's all a fine balance, um, generally numbers that are close. I've seen it work just fine. In fact, I've seen some really screwy numbers that seem to saw so seem to run just fine. If anybody is looking to learn more about timing, uh, I would simply suggest that it's an experience thing and do a lot of reading um, on the forums and hopefully you can come to even better conclusions than I do. So I hope that explains timing enough for people that want to understand it. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. And please post in the comments section and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much.